the name of Jesus Christ we pray that amen is not born again that that amen is still surviving through ventilator if you know and you know that you are the redeemed of the Lord let that amen shake your neighbor out from their seats hallelujah you may be seated amen i'm excited this this morning god has a place for me i don't know of you but i know something that the bible said that there is this man called Kevin praise God and the man Kevin waxed great went forward and grew until he became very great if you're looking for where you find that scripture is in Genesis 26 verse 13 but I'm permitting you to put your name in there. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody this morning? Put your name in there. When you have an address, then you will be addressed properly. I want you to know that today is a day that the Lord has made. And you and I will not be angry in it we'll be glad in it just bow your heads father i hand over this atmosphere to you i am but a mortal and i know nothing of my own accord i decrease that you might increase in the few meaning stroke and hour that i'm going to be speaking to your people lord i pray that you use this lips of clay of mine to touch the lives of men minister to souls deliver those that needs deliverance let the captive be set free according to your word in the name of jesus amen, amen. turn to your neighbor and say i'm glad you made it that come on if your neighbor is not uh if your neighbor is not responding please you, you are permitted to change seats as as you can see there is a lot of free spaces around so change your seat if you if you wish i know that all, not all neighbors are neighbors indeed praise god i want to speak on something very very important to the church and the body of Jesus Christ a topic that has been overlooked for many years and stylishly some kind of tradition and religiosity has overshadowed it in the 70s and um, 80s early 80s stroke the early 90s this particular topic was one of the reasons why revival stayed in the church today it is so disappointing that believers you and i we now look at the body of christ today as a place where people can come and put some man-made laws and Paul, while speaking and addressing this kind of thing, he said, you have made the power of God of none effect because of your tradition. What does tradition do? Tradition comes to limit the ability of God. Tradition tells you that you should not do it. Not because it's not written, but because people before you didn't do it. Am I talking to somebody? 
Tradition tells you that you should not progress from this height where you are. Not because it is not written in the scriptures, but because your pastor has never done it before. But understand me this morning that the scripture said that the steadfastness of the Lord are renewed every morning. What does that mean? It means that today God may ask you to mix, take some clay and put your saliva on it and mix it and put on the eyes of the blind and tell them go wash that they will start seeing. Tomorrow God may just ask you to just speak a word. So meaning that you are not putting yourself in the place of tradition. But you are allowing yourself to be flexible with God. One of the things that made the, the Lord destroy the children of Israel, many of them in the wilderness, is because they were stiff-necked. stiff-necked god looked at them and said you guys are stiff-necked people meaning they are very difficult to lead so somehow this tradition this spirit of religiosity the doctrine of man has stepped into the church and changed the gospel from the pulpit people are no longer hearing the true gospel of jesus christ according to matthew 28 go ye into the world preach the gospel preach the gospel don't preach mammon preach the gospel don't preach money preach the gospel of jesus christ and the reason for the gospel you know you know you know jesus made it clear he said the poor you will have with you always no matter how you preach about financial prosperity you cannot eradicate poverty but the poor must always be with you always and i know you'll be wondering what could this particular gospel be what is it that we are missing today? Why is it that we are no longer energized? Why is it that everything we do these days is all about entertainment? Yeah. If we don't have good infotainment in the church, the worship is not going to go well. If you don't have microphone, you would not want to preach or sing. What happened to your mouth microphone? Jesus was preaching to 5,000 in the open. My dear Jesus, hundreds of men, thousands of men without this And he never had sore throats for one day. His vocals were not destroyed. And I'm here this morning not to get you excited, but to bring you back home. This morning, come back home. Be you big, small, bishop, pastor, member, deacon, deaconess, whoever you are, come back home. There is a proverb that says that he that dances doesn't see his back. People that watch you are the ones that see your back. So that's why when you run, keep running. But make sure you pause a little bit and give attention to your footprints. You may have drifted without you knowing. The church has drifted. Talk to somebody about sin in the church. As a pastor, you will receive a red letter from the council members. I said, the way you were speaking today, you were so rude. Talk to 
talking about sin we have made sin to be something that people should be comfortable with let me tell you the revival we pray about we left it when we stopped preaching about repentance because there is no reviver without repentance today pastors are fighting themselves over position and who will have the largest church not who will lead the largest congregation into heaven but who will have the largest church in town who is going to be the latest pastor who is going to be the pastor everybody loves who is going to be that person come out from your flesh you cannot man on the pulpit the Lord was dealing with me this morning and I heard a word I've never heard before the Lord said pray 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 that the dead meat in the church will come alive again dead meat you know what dead meat what happens to dead meat start smelling and stinking Don't give me, don't give me the, 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 the sermon of, oh, I've been in the church for 20 something years. Hello? <laughs> it's not about the church you attend. And it's not about the name of the church. It's not about the denomination. It's about your relationship with God. Because your name may be in the tight record in the church but not in heaven Amen. you may know pastor have pastor's number please do you know God that pastor call upon look at your neighbor say it's time for you to wake up wake up we are slumbering You know, when the Bible talks about if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. What's that wicked ways? The wicked ways is not because you don't give money to people. No, no, no. The wicked ways is condoling evil. Can I hear you say condole? Evil. When you condole evil, you are as guilty as the perpetrator of evil. Where is the love in the church? It's gone. Why? Because we have flesh parading themselves up and down. When Jesus looked at this character, looked at this kind of lifestyle, Jesus lost his 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 self in it the bible says he took cocaine flogged them out of the church he said the house of my father shall be the place of prayer and not the dens of thieves we've lost passion for the things of god Sometimes when I look at our youths, I ask myself a question. I say, when I was young, truly, I was literally sleeping in the church. I had no love for anything, not even humans or animals, other, for, other than the love for God. I was lost in God. To the extent that my family somehow persecuted me at an early stage. I was beaten for going to church. What have you seen? Who has persecuted you? See, see you, you've been a believer but you've never been persecuted. You've just been on the platter of gold, having everything relaxed. Listen. 
persecution comes with this race if you've never been persecuted then check your life go and do some personal evaluation you'll find out that you've not crossed completely put me up revelation chapter 1 verse 3 revelation 1 verse 3 Blessed is he that read it, and they that hear the words of this word, prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the end is what? My topic today is Jesus is coming back. See, some of us have forgotten. <laughs> Jesus is coming back. So the house mortgage you're running for, even as you're going to get your loan, just know it. That Jesus is coming back. Even as you're investing on your flesh, buying all the expensive things to make you look beautiful and handsome but know it that Jesus is coming back and he said he's not coming to rapture a church with spots and wrinkles so my dear you better get up and start walking I've told you before that we are not into religion. What we practice as believers is not religiosity. Religion is what man created out of the gospel. Christianity is Christ's earthly work. Patterning your lifestyle to Christ's lifestyle. That is Christianity. And the meaning of Christianity is Christ-like. What have you been doing with your life? What have you and I been doing? We've been busy pursuing money. Haven't you read that this whole world is going to be destroyed with fire? Haven't you read that those that their names are not found in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire? 1997 as a mid young believer then gave my life to Christ 94 um, status finished up school of ministry 96 and by 97 I was studying the whole of the book of Revelation and when I got to a state that was talking about the lake of fire and the Bible tried to describe it as the as the fire that burns with brimstones. And I said, How does this look like? And I said, Let me give a try to myself. I love experimenting things, but carefully. So I on the gas, put on the gas, and I place my hand on it. And within second, I screamed. And I started thinking, I said, if the fire that was made by man can be this powerful. My prayer for us is that none of us will ever test hell. I've not come to preach to us today. I've come to put us remembrance that as you have given your life to Christ know it that a race you have started a race you've started when you read the book of Revelation from from chapter 1 then to chapter 3 talks about the seven churches now listen in the amplify those seven churches are 
called the seven priests of the seven churches. Now, originally, there are seven kinds of believers in the church. And you will see them from Revelation chapter 1 to chapter 3. Because all that the Lord was speaking are people that live a certain kind of lifestyle as believers. There are those that are in the church calling the name of God at the same time holding the, the image of Baal. You are in the church and you visit soothsayers because there are no prophets again in the house. The ones that used to be in the church, you've used your mouth to chase them away. You've called them fake. And some of them, out of frustration, they've, they've become self-destruct. Some of them have backslided because you told them that their calling is not real. Now you go to seek the devil to tell you about your future. It's it, your future that was given to you by God can only be told to you or be spoken about by God, not by Satan. Take me back to those days when, when we make mistake and fall into sin and we go before the throne of God and say, Father, have mercy. I pray, Lord, I've come short of your glory. Revive me again in Jesus' name. Take me back to those days when the zeal of the Lord is on you like never before. Let's go back to those days when you were lost in Christ. When, when friends talk to you, the only thing that comes out of your mouth is that the Lord is good. Take me back. When I was studying this morning, tears started running down my eyes, and I found out that many of us need to be born again, again. You need to be born again, again. See, you are not the first to backslide. Even the disciples of Jesus, after Jesus had died, they all backslided. But one thing I love about them, when the chief shepherd came back and went to them one after another and called them, they obeyed the voice. Even those that doubt, doubted no more. After the, the, the encounter of Thomas doubting Jesus, even when he was crucified. Was there anywhere you saw where Thomas doubted Christ again? No. As a believer, you are expected to grow consistently. Walking your, way, your, your, your ways and all that you do through righteousness and the fear of God in your mind. Today, believers are even afraid to deal with their fellow believers. In the church, the church is a place that you must not trust anybody but you can trust unbelievers today believers take believers to court and have an unbelieving judge to preside over them and when you when you talk to some of us you see how the arrogance will come out of our mouth See, I understand spiritual things. You don't know anything. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation 3. Revelation 3 verse 1 from the Amplify, please. Revelation 3, verse 1. To the angel, in bracket, divine messenger of the church in Sardis, write, These 
are the words of him who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your deeds. You have a name in bracket repetition that you are alive but in reality you are dead before me. You're moving around like you're alive. Shouting, oh, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Right on, pastor. But the Lord is saying, these are dead meats talking. Before me, they are dead. They are not alive. How can a believer not be able to pray just for one hour to tarry? And you tell me that you've been in faith for 30 years. 30. So you grow every every year you grow just once. Just one thing is added. So in 30 years you've only grown 30 times. What a mystery. You have a name that you are like. What's that name? Believer. I'm a believer. I want, you know, many times when I ask people, I say, are you born again? They tell me, oh, I'm baptized. Listen. <laughs> oh, I was born in the church. Identity. Reputation. That is it. I have a reputation that my parents gave birth to me in the church. But are you in the church? You are not in the church. You were born in the church but today you are outside the church or the church is outside you i'm not even talking about you having church in your life i'm talking about you having jesus in your life for the church is the body of christ so the church cannot be in you christ in you is the hope of glory Take me back. Take me back, for I know that Christ is coming. You have a name. God is saying, the reality, I, I, I know the reality. The worst thing that can happen to any man is to lie to himself. You know you are not in Christ. You're deceiving yourself. For the fact that you are in a vehicle with me, does not guarantee you that you're safe. Am I communicating with somebody? You don't understand. I may be traveling on a jet flight and you are also traveling for the fact that you know that a man of God is in that particular jet flight. That does not guarantee your access to heaven. show you something praise God the spirit of the end time is what has engulfed many believers and has taken a hold of them that many of us we no longer give a hoot about what happens we just want to have that I feel good kind of gospel am I communicating with somebody we want to have something that will make us feel iry Nobody's coming to drop key in offering, right? Yes, because there is no receive your house right now in the name of Jesus. There is no receive that car in the name of Jesus. There is no your bank account is going to increase in the name of Jesus. Nobody shouting yeah. Nobody shouting ah. Nobody shouting right on. Why? Because this kind of gospel, ha. Ah. This kind of gospel has gone it took his leave many years ago without the church knowing gradually he left it take me back to those days when when you hear about heaven you go in tears 
take me back to the, those days when you are you 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 are you, are, you, you can't just wait to meet with your maker why are you afraid of coronavirus it's because you don't have christ in you i have to be raw if you say you follow this scripture and you believe ah oh, to the latter in the scripture you can take caution for the safety you know for people not to feel uncomfortable but you will not live in fears because you know that the mask you have is not what is keeping you safe am i talking to two persons the most secured house in this lovely country canada was as secured and coronavirus found his way inside and got a hold of Trudeau's wife. So, you know, you should know that the, the state house is one major secured house, one of the best in the world. But it couldn't keep coronavirus out. What keeps you safe? is Christ <clears throat> listen a typical rugged believer is not afraid of death you know why because he sees death as an exit to meet with God why are you afraid to meet with God and you say you love God huh Is because you are not sure of if you close your eyes here today where will your eyes be open because the moment anyone shut their eyes here in this life it opens at the other side today it's believers that attack pastors more than unbelievers the spirit of the end time give me second timothy second second timothy chapter three verse one we're going to be going up to nine verse one then to nine second timothy three second timothy three verse one then to nine Are you there <clears throat> awesome but understand this are you with me everyone but understand this that in the last days are we in the last days now the yes is coming from one side are you are we in the last days all the signs spoken of in the book of matthew 24 have you seen every one of them but understand this that in the last days dangerous times the scripture put it of great stress and trouble we come difficult days will be hard to bear very hard to bear that's why when the lord told me on the, our crossover night consigning that 2020 is going to be a trying year for believers how many of us still remember when i said it december 31st of 2019 i said it here crossover night that the lord told me that 2020 will be a trying year for believers now when coronavirus came the lord told me that this is the first of it more are coming that is not coronavirus to try our times hard to bear verse 2 verse 2 verse 2 for people will be lovers of self they will love themselves narcissistic self-focused myself the spirit of selfishness that's why when you look at what the attitude of some believers you wonder and say is this a believer is this sister born again how will she act like this so selfish that is the spirit of the entire lovers of money there are some believers right now 
from Monday up until Saturday they've been working and originally they are not on the list to work today but because of money they are busy going to others and telling them please give me your shift I will take your shift give me no wonder their, their life has been shifting and not be steady lovers of money these days there are people believers that can betray fellow believers for money money oh lord of mercy impaired by greed you know when the opp pull up somebody they say an impaired driver right that's it impaired by greed arrogant your pastor tells you this thing you're doing is not good no no no, no pastor even the bible i i me too i at me i read the bible let me tell you you can never be as equal as your pastor don't dream it because it's a dream that will never come to pass the bible says, for many are chosen are called but few are chosen there are men god has given a mandate to do his work and to be his mouthpiece here on earth the days of abraham moses and the rest of them has not gone those days still exist there are men that are representatives of god we are all believers and we believe to one god but there are men that represent god here on earth don't joke with them don't go there am i talking to somebody both were arrogant reverend and, and, and disobedient to parents these days your parents don't tell you what to do can i dwell there a little bit that's one of the spirit of the end time and you know these days the society has made parents to keep negotiate they have become chief negotiators yes. they negotiate their ways with their children if you say you are an adult leave the house and go and adult yourself very well am i communicating with somebody I give God all the praise and under heaven and lie not. I left my father's house and my mother's house at the age of 11. I have taken care of myself from the age 11. I'm not joking. I lived in the church at a point because I had no, nowhere to live. So I was sleeping in the church, bit in the church, and the church members never knew. But everybody sees me in church first before everyone. But nobody knows that I don't have a place to stay and I never bugged the pastor for one day because I see it as my father's house it was in the church I was sleeping on the altar one of those days that I had an angelic visitation that I will never forget I fed for myself my mom was crying come back home I said no if God who has called me from your womb said to you sent a messenger to you that i will be a prophet then if that god cannot take care of me may i die of hunger and starvation but here am i today testifying of the goodness of god he's a faithful god see he's a rewarder of not all the bible didn't say all you think god don't know what he's doing he didn't say i'm a rewarder of everyone that didn't know he said then that diligently seek me some of us are not diligent in the things of god but we are very we want god to be diligent towards us but we are very careless towards god to parents when your mother talk to you your father talk to you tell them you see 
your time has gone there is no time that no time time didn't go anywhere you are the one going time is still there hello people are ungrateful this generation unholy and profane verse 3 verse 3 let's run verse 3 and they will be unloving devoid of natural woman affection callous and inhuman irreconcilable malicious gossip hey can I stay here a little bit spirit of the end time like a canary bed what they say talk you talk the one they say don't talk you want to talk in fact you are very uncomfortable because you want to say something your body will be shaken the pastor will ask you are you okay you see pastor I don't know I, I'm feeling somehow inside of me why because you don't have self control to hold yourself and not to say a word Thank God for the mask. <laughs> now I'm, 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 I'm serious. Thank God for the mask. Because some persons just need to gag their mouth. Praise God. Devoid of self control. Temperate, immoral, the opposite of moral. You don't do the moral things, but it's the immoral things that you do. Morality has left the place of your heart. Why? Because Christ is not at the center of it. Let me tell you, you can't live morally without Christ. Look at your neighbor and say, can I get an amen from you? Without Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the world will keep complaining. The world needs Christ. Our communities need Christ. You can't stop the shooting until you bring the Bible back to the schools. You want to stop black life matters bring back god to schools there are men that are brutal haters of good you do anything good they hate it they jealous you for no reason i'm a living testimony there are pastors in this in this land in this toronto that hates me some I don't know, some I know. And I don't want to know. Because their opinion don't move me. Opinion is the cheapest commodity in the market. Even a madman has one for you. So if your life is built by the opinion of the poor, you will be a successful failure. You wait for people to approve you before you now know that you're getting it right. No. You won't make it. You won't go far. Somebody say, I hear. I hear. My God. Verse 4. Very fast. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Verse 4. Traitors. Betrayers. People that are, that are willing to, 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 to betray you. Reckless. Conceited. Lovers of what? Sensuals. Pleasure rather than lovers of God. Verse 5. Verse 5. Holding to a form of outward godliness. Are you seeing that? Which is in the church. Oh, somebody lift up your holy hands. Wow! Form. It's a form of godliness. Now, in bracket, what is that? Aha. I spoke about it before, right? This is the problem of the church. 
religion my religion said that this is not my religion said that is not my religion stops me from doing this so the tradition of man becomes a religion. because if it was right the bible wouldn't put it in bracket that this thing is not godly godliness religion although they have denied its power for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith by their fruits you shall know them there are some person you don't need soothsayers to tell you where they belong and Paul was saying he said avoid such people hello everybody must not be your friend in the church salutation is not love if the ways of a man you have seen it that is not telling with the ways of God and according to the scriptures you are permitted to give the person an arm's length hello when you stand with the person just tell the person thank God also for this season two meters you just said hey brother hey just keep your two meters okay avoid such people and keep far away from them verse 6 verse 6 for among them are those who warm their way into homes and captivate morally weak you see they see those that are morally weak and spiritually dwarfed which means they are they've not grown so much spiritually so they take advantage of them and turn their hearts against the things of God. They are easily swayed by various impulses. Verse 7. Verse 7. Always learning. You see, this kind of persons, this kind of people that operate with the spirit of the end time, they are always learning. They will go to T.D. Jake's conference. They have all the pastor's name in Toronto. They attend their conferences. They attend all their services. I wonder how they do that. They travel from place to place, buy books, read all readables, even read occultic books and air books, everything, join it. Now, the Bible said in verse 7, always learning and never listening to anybody who would teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In King James, it said, ever learning but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. May God help us. That is, it. That is where we found ourselves now. Verse 8. Verse 8. Verse 8. Just as Janus and Jambres, the they, they, were, they caught magicians of Egypt opposed Moses so these men also opposed the truth men of depraved mind unqualified and what worthless as teachers in regards to what the faith verse 9 this is what Paul finally said he said but they will not get very far for their meaningless nonsense you know when you say nonsense the the oh come on, come on come on somebody say nonsense. nonsense because it makes no sense that's why it's nonsense meaningless nonsense and ignorance will become obvious to everyone as was that of Janus and Jambres touch your neighbor are you in Christ or out of Christ? Don't get me wrong. I'm not here this morning or this afternoon or evening, wherever you're watching from or wherever you're seated from or the angle of your position of life today. I'm not here to drag you out to the court of the Lord, but I'm here to remind you as a messenger. And as I'm reminding you, I'm reminding myself. 
am I talking to somebody because we all are in it 2 Timothy chapter 4 3 to 4 2 Timothy 4 3 to 4 2 Timothy 4 3 to 4 2 Timothy 4 3 to 4 for the time we come and we are in that time now when people will not tolerate sound doctrine I said it last week Sunday. I said, I will never wed any lady that goes to get pregnant. I'm saying it now. Let everybody hear it. Amen. Goes to get pregnant. Come with your big stomach and ask me to wed three persons. I won't do it. If the church of Jesus is disciplined, Let's stand for what is morally right and stop giving excuses for people's attitude. Past that I'm stomach pastors, all they want is that okay, no problem. I'll wed you. I'll, 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 I'll wed you. Just bring that brown envelope, that white envelope that has some money inside, and that's it. This is how much I charge. Now they have not, not become God's servants anymore, they have turned around to become hirelings. How can a pastor be comfortable? His members are dying. People are dying in the church. He's only happy that he goes to the funeral to take the funeral money. Charges his members. Then why are you my pastor? If I'm called to glory, you have to charge my family money to, to preside over my funeral. Then why have I been your member for 30 something years? Is that no madness in the church? That is nonsensical nonsense. Praise God. They will not be able to tolerate sand doctor. When you're telling them what is right, they are not able to tolerate it. Praise God. Accurate instruction that challenges them with the God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled. Hey. You see that tickling kind of gospel? You will be rich in seven days. I prophesy to you um, a seven step into prosperity, an eight step into breaking loose. Hey! Okay, after you finish prospering and breaking loose from what is telling you, which I don't know. Praise God. Now, what happens to your soul? I'm breaking loose today. Because you think that salvation is about you living good life, driving good car. That's why I say to us that this generation is the greediest generation ever since Christ came. Very selfish generation. The apostles, early apostles, early church leaders sacrificed their lives for you and I to have the gospel today. But let just one city council person make a law that nobody should wear inscription called Jesus and walk along the road. You will see believers. You see, the Bible said you must obey. Hello? There are certain things that I don't accept. I was talking to somebody. I said, look, any day I will be arrested, it may come. Praise God. I'm not promising you that it will not happen. If it happens, oh, praise God. The Bible said, blessed are you when you're persecuted for my name's sake. So that is the kind of blessing that is accepted in heaven. So any day I'm arrested for any reason because of the gospel. There is one question I want to ask the judge. You want to hear that question? If I'm arrested for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, why is it that the, this country has not abolished the Bible? Why is it that you use the Bible to swear in leaders? You swear in the name of Jesus and denying the workability of Christ. I don't need a lawyer. Does that one question 
judge tell the world why you do that even you being a judge you, you they swear it in with the scriptures if you jail me then you have jailed the whole nation and the whole nation should be able to explain so i'm giving you hints there are certain questions you throw it to unbelievers they will just tell you please take your problems and go am i talking to somebody they will release you they just say go, 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 go. you're a troublemaker Where are we? Jesus. My God. So let's go down to verse 4. After today, you will know that it's not everywhere they gather in the name of church that this church indeed. Yes. Yes. Can I come get this somebody? Yes. There are places that is called community gathering. Yes. Association meeting points. Yes. <laughs> Say, and we turn their ears away from the fruit and we wander off into mirth and man-made fictions and you seeing that they try to create things for you that will look attractive entertainment on the pulpit oh i was in church and what did you enjoy about the service oh i just enjoyed the way they were doing choreography yes That was what Jesus came to do. By now, you and I will be wandering in hell. People are coming out of the church. They are not weeping and crying. I say, oh Lord, I heard your voice today. Oh Lord, I heard you speak to me from the mouth of the servant of God. How can the congregation be held when the pastor himself is a dead meat? I know one hour. Walking cops. Fictions. And we accept the unacceptable. There are things that are unacceptable in the faith. Don't try to mix it. Let me let me round up. Let me round up. Somebody say round up. I will round up. Praise God. Revelation 20, 11 to 15. Very fast. We'll run that very fast now. Revelation 20. Every man will be judged. Let me tell you, if you like, give one million to the church, you will be judged. Hello. <laughs> you will not be judged based on the one million. <laughs> Thank God that your pastor will not be standing on the gate of heaven. Because if I am there, maybe I will pity some of us that are good titers and say, you know, you were a good titer coming. Uh, but I give glory to God that I am exempted. Even me too, I will have to walk my way in there. Am I communicating with somebody? Paul said, God forbid that I preach men into the kingdom and me, I be a castaway. He said, God forbid. God forbid. It won't work. Because I'm trying to get into. Yeah, the Bible says, narrow is the way. So every one of us have to battle our way in there. <sighs> Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Revelation 20. Verse 11. And I saw a great white throne. This is it. And I saw a great white throne and him who was seated upon it from whose presence this earth you are that you love so much and the heaven fled away and no place was found for them for this heaven and earth are passing away have this at the if I don't have it at the back of your mind because we normally say have it at the back of bring it front to the front of your mind that this earth is going to pass away. Your prayers will not stop it. I heard some people praying about false prophets. I said, oh, we are going to fight them. This sin is a sign that you have not been reading. The increase of false prophets and false teachers in this dispensation is one of the signs of the end times. So you can't preach.
preach it away is a sign that we come it must come your prayers can't stop it so stop that nonsense let them be Jesus said let them grow together for in the day the Lord of the harvest will come he will separate the wheat from the chaff that's why I'm not I'm not I'm not in, I'm not in any disturbance with anybody anybody that is let them be doing I'll show you something what the Bible closed with one word that will shock you let's finish this and verse 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 12 verse 12 please verse 12 ah, and I saw the dead great and the small standing before the throne and books were open then another book was open listen it said books were open another book singular so there are no heavens there is just heaven but in hell people have apartments books houses but another house was open you get that point now awesome now which is the book of life this book of life is a book that you may be in the church that's why I don't believe in church membership certificate what are you giving the certificate for because you can't present it in heaven it's useless you don't need it the house of God you don't need an ID to get in it's free of charge it's open so I'm against the gospel of certifying people in the church as members. You know what? Pastors use that so they will have a hold of you and have some level of control over you. I don't believe in that. You can't, you can't put the people of God in bondage. You are too small as a mortal man to put them in bondage. Who, the, who, 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 who do you even think you are? What in heaven's name gives you the audacity that believes that you can put them in bondage? They are God's people. And you have no right to mess around with them. The book was open. Book of life. And the dead were judged according to what they had done as written in the books. That is everything done while on earth that's why i tell you the day you drop one leg up here it is marked for you don't you know that you have angels that follow you wherever you go the day the lord opened my eyes to see every man every woman even the unbelievers they have a scroll an angel that carries a scroll they take notes of everything you are doing both good bad and the ugly and the only thing that has your the power to erase those things written in the book of the dead is the blood of Jesus and the dead were judged what they had done as written in the books that is everything done while on earth. Go to the next verse, please. Very first, very fast, very fast. The next verse. And, and the sea gave up the dead. Hear this. Who were in it and, the, and death and hedges. Now, what is hedges? In brackets, the realm of the dead. Anybody that dies goes to hedges to wait. Anybody that closes their eyes here moves to hedges. It is called the realm of the dead. Am I communicating with somebody? And uh, surrendered the dead who were in there. And they were judged, sentenced, everyone according to their deeds. Hey. Oh my God. Jesus, help me. Next verse. Verse 14. 
Verse 14. Then death and hedges, the realm of the dead, were thrown. You see, this death that people dies, that came because of the sin of Adam and Eve, this death, the ability, the spirit of death will be destroyed on the last day. And hedges, which is the realm of the dead, will also be destroyed. Because after we pass through this, we will live forevermore. So God needs not to keep that realm anymore. So he said he will destroy that realm. He will cast them into the lake of fire. And the Bible says this is the second death. The lake of fire. The internal separation from God. There is no 20 years of being there and later you'll come back. No. There is no 40 years. Let me just bear the pains. I've done 40. It's, remain, it's not a jail sentence. You see how they sentence somebody for life? Later they say, okay, we have to give him parole, right? This one, there is no coming back to it. Haven't you read that after the rapture, there is, there is no blood saving you anymore. If you are not raptured, on the first trump, you have to pay through your own blood. Verse 15. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. In conclusion, Revelation 22, 11 to 12, finally. Revelation 22, 11 to 12. I tell you the truth. You have to be sure that you are sure. Stop playing church. It's over. You cannot claim now that you've never heard this gospel. Because some of us are hearing this kind of gospel this way for the first time in our life. Yeah, I'm not joking. Because I have looked at it, searched through it. It is not popular anymore. Yes. The Bible says it, will, it was going to be like the days of Noah. Men were marrying and be given to marriage also. Everything was normal. Everybody was going about their normal life. And suddenly, suddenly, the ark, the door to the ark was closed. Would you be in the number? Would you be among them? It is, you see, you, you may have, your pastor may love you so much. But there are protocols that you cannot break. There are, there are things that you need to do. Your pastor will stand for himself. Yes. Every man. There is no husband and wife. This is my family. Yes, please give us way. We are coming. This is my family. This is protocol. Hello. You will be all alone. Quit playing. Quit playing church. That's why when I look at some persons, the way they do and handle the things of God, I just but pity them. But how would they know if they are not taught? How would they know if somebody would not preach to them? Now you are hearing me today. You are going to still hear more of this. You are going to hear more of it. Enough of the deception everywhere. Revelation 22 verse 11. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. <laughs> you see, when you are telling people stop this thing you are doing. They, they are struggling with you. Say, for what? It's my right. No problem. The book of Revelation ended with this. Jesus was speaking. He said, let the one who does wrong still do wrong. And the one who is filthy, vile, impure, <laughs> still be filthy. And the one who is righteous, just upright, still be what? Righteous. And the one who is holy, still be what? Did he say anybody's going to force you or beat you into being? No. 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 Nobody's going to do that. 
It's time for us to tell ourselves the truth. We need Christ. Jesus is coming again. Many of us are here today. There are people that are having an encounter of Christ. Children. They are seeing Jesus everywhere. How can you be in church for 20 something years? You don't even know how it, to experience the Holy Spirit. No relationship. When they ask you, you say, that is the church my father and mother gave birth to me in. May that not be the excuse you will go to heaven and tell, if I the angel from the gate, he will just throw you into hell, straight up, without judgment. Let's rise up to our feet. Today, people are ashamed to receive Christ. Remember, Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, <laughs> on that day, I will be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Don't think it that there is another, there is a space for another Nicodemus. There is no space again for another Nicodemus. No ninth movement. Receive Christ now. Some years back, I don't know if I've shared this testimony before. Some years back, I was moving with a friend of mine, a pastor. We just finished praying many years ago. I think that was uh, 1994. Just finished praying. Young believers. So, while we were going, there was a, there was a T-junction. A lady was just standing. And my friend said to me, I heard a voice from God say go and talk to her to give her life to Christ and I said yes I heard the same voice too we said okay let's go do it because that was how radical we were we don't care who you are we don't care how tall, short, fat, big, slim are you? we went to her and said lady, lady um, brother this, brother that uh, the Lord said we should tell you to give your life to Christ she said she did that and changed position we looked at ourselves. We took a step again. I said, please, sister, we don't know you, you don't know us. But there is a, a necessity now for you to give your life to Christ. Invite Jesus. She said, please, you guys are embarrassing me. We shifted a little bit by this time she's now looking at us as trespassers so after the third time we were still standing waiting for the bus to pick us she crossed the road and the oncoming vehicle knocked her down she died instantly <laughs> let me tell you I hear people say uh, I will receive Christ but not now let me tell you <laughs> Ah, there is no better time to say, Lord, come into my life. Every day is an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity. You may be a believer, but somehow you don't you, you are just in church because maybe if you don't come pastor will call you or somebody will say oh you no longer go to church anymore and you are here today please join me and let the hosts of heaven rejoice because of you make that peace that bold step before God accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life that's all forget about every other thing they will fix themselves as time goes on close your eyes everyone Tarabosh Tabali Radosh
lift that right hand up and start praying Lord have mercy on me just keep praying just keep praying just keep praying just, just ask the Lord to help you to help you Lord help me Lord help me just as I am without one plea Lord, help me, Lord. Jesus, help me. Lord, help me, Jesus. And Just as you are. waiting not to read my soul. Sing that song. Oh, Somebody say those words. God is here. God is here. Lord, I come before you today as a sinner that needs you. Have mercy on me, Lord. Cleanse me from every guilt and shame. Lord, let my name be written in the book of life. Let your grace speak on my behalf. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead and give God praise.